Next guy, this is this is just crushing news for the fantasy community, for everybody, really. And it's the Nick Chubb injury. It looked terrible. Uh, I mean, the Steelers fans, I give them a lot of credit for the grace and the way that they handled it, giving him a standing ovation, all that stuff. But it's a major knee injury. Definitely going to miss the rest of the season, Tom. Why don't you tell us a little more about Nick Chubb? We are still awaiting wording on what all was injured, but it looked really, really bad. Like We know there is a lot of structures in there that are injured. Reports today saying that he's probably going to need two separate surgeries with a, a time gap between each of them. This is not good at all. Um, and again, we don't know exactly what's injured, but it sounds like this is probably worse or, or equal to or worse than what Javante's was last season. Um, J.K. Dobbins a few years ago. And it sounds almost like it's on par with Chubb's injury from college, which was really, really bad. But again, we don't have the specifics yet. But what we need to consider is, so with the injury, it's almost a guarantee the ACL is part of it. So if we follow our typical, you know, what predicts if a player can return from an ACL, it's one age, not in his favor anymore. He's 27, will be 28 next season. Two, number of structures involved. There's definitely a ton. So his rehab process is going to be very, very slow at first, especially if he needs two surgeries, because then you start the rehab after the first one. And, and I don't know what the breakdown of the surgeries would be. We, I'm sure we'll find out soon, but he'll do some period of rehab after the first one. And then he'll have more stuff repaired. So then the rehab kind of starts over at that point. So that's not in his favor at all. And that's also going to delay the timing of when the surgery occurred, because that's when rehab really starts. That's when that timeline of, I had surgery this day, and there's X amount of weeks until week one. Um, so those three are really all not in his favor, and those are really, really big factors with being able to return from a significant knee injury. He'll be 28 next year, and we know that the data after these major knee injuries, not good for running backs. For ACL specifically, we see a 35% decline in their fantasy production in the first season back. And then, so pretty pretty confidently say next year is not going to be great for him going into year two after this injury. He's 29 at that point running back start to decline. Now, Nick Chubb, he's got some things going in his favor. One, we see how much he's squatted. Like those legs are about as strong as they can get pre-injury and pre-surgery. So that will help to some degree. And by all reports, he's an incredibly hard worker, dedicated, dedicated person. So He's got that going for him as well, but definitely huge uphill battle for him to play at a high level again. Um, I, I'm I'm not going to entirely count him out from coming back to playing the NFL, but I just it's it's, it's going to be very very hard. If I had him in any dynasty leagues, I would take whatever I can get for him at this point. It's heartbreaking, 100%. I mean, he was also this year's favorite to win the rushing title. I mean, he's a fan favorite. He's a good guy. People love him. But I, I'm worried just because of his age. Like, I would say if there was no injury here, Tom, he's got two, three solid years left, right? But this is going to put him, you know, way back, a bunch of steps back here. And like you said, man, he's going to be 29 before he's fully recovered again and, and you know, remains to be seen. But if a guy could do it, man, he's done it before, right? What did he in 20? 15 right he had this this major you know some major procedures done there right yeah but keep in mind he was like 19 19 20 years old back then right which is a huge advantage over being 27 28 for sure now fantasy implication wise i mean this backfield becomes interesting i think i mean we got news Very today I, I, I was sitting in class got the news about uh kareem hunt signing there for me, I mean, this is an early take. We have to see. I think the guy I want, though, is Jerome Ford. I mean, they're top, there were dudes spending 150 of their $200 people spending all out. I don't think he's a league winner, Jerome Ford. He's the guy that I'm excited most about in this backfield, though. He was great, man. 106 yards, 16 carries, added three catches, 25 for a touchdown, only 24 years old. He's a 4 4 6 40 guy. He showed a little bit of burst last week. Um, showed really good. I don't know if you saw the game at all. He ran right, and there was some traffic there. Cuts back around, 69-yard run, really showed some good vision there. Don't get it twisted. He's not Nick Chubb, of course, but I think he's the guy to own there. I mean, we might see a little bit of Pierre Strong on the goal line, and maybe he's – I don't even think he's worthy of a, of a bench stash, but definitely go check out, of course, Kareem Hunt and Jerome Ford. 
But Kareem Hunt, I mean, he knows the system well. Real quick, Tom, what do you think about him? I, th- I think that he's washed just by looking at some of his statistics and how he did last year. But, I mean, he definitely shouldn't be on your waivers, guys. Yeah, no, I mean, he should be picked up for sure. I agree that Ford is going to be the guy. Um, I have Nick Chubb in my main league, and I, I don't know why, but a few years ago, somebody in the league complained that he was, like, too busy on Tuesdays to look at waivers. So we pushed our waiver day back to Thursday, and I'm set to spend, like, 70% of my fab on Jerome Ford. Uh, and by the time my league mates hear this, it'll have already gone. So I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> disclosing that but i i i, I have it set to send to spend 70 percent of my fab on a four because i'm screwed like chubb was my guy yeah. and he's gone so i need a replacement um and i think based off what we've seen from four at least the other day he can fill that role well enough that i think he's worth that 70 percent fab um if you're in a situation like me where you lost chubb if you didn't lose Chubb and you have two, three viable running backs, I wouldn't spend that much. Um, but yeah, I mean, Hunt's worth adding too. I wouldn't spend more than maybe 15, 20% on him though. He knows the system, but I just think he's past his prime. I mean, why, why did it take him till week three to get signed? Right. Last right, year, right. I looked this up too. I mean, Kareem Hunt last year, 41st in yards per carry. I think he's past his prime. He's 28 years old. I know people don't want to hear it because Kareem Hunt was such a staple in the fantasy community for all these years. But, um, you know, I wouldn't even start Hunt this week. Um, it's a wait and see for me. But I'm comfortable with Ford. Tom, I hope you get him with that 70%. I think he could perform as a mid-range RB too, man. You may want to bump, bump it to 72. You, you can never do like an, an even – well, that's percentage-wise, but – I actually thought about that because you're exactly right. Like people are going to be like, oh, I'm going to put an, an e- either like a, a number ending at zero or ending in five on it. So if you just go one more, you might be good. Yeah, but then they think about going one more. So you have to go two more. But Got then, it. Got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the mind games I play at like 1 a.m. in my bed, try to pick people up. And then I, ch- I change it six times. And then the next morning I spent like 50 on someone. And the next highest is like 31. I'm like, damn it. You know what? <laughs> 